first of all, okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, when uh, when web technology began uh, began uh, became popular, uh, people started writing a lot of websites. Initially, we used uh, HTML and CSS. HTML, as you know, is used for uh, creating the layout for the web pages. And uh, CSS is actually used to style the uh, web pages. So uh, this is how web websites were initially written uh, at the start of uh, web development. But uh, after a while, uh, we also start, started using a JavaScript. So JavaScript, as you know, uh, is can be used for various things to provide. Its main purpose is to provide interactivity to the website. For example, uh, if you go to a particular uh, web page, for example, consider this is a website. If I am clicking means uh, I'm able to open this menu, right? So all of this uh, logic is actually handled by the JavaScript. So uh, I have actually created this uh, sample counter application, as you can see. Uh, for, so I'll just explain what I've done here. So I created a container uh, called as div, okay? So div is simply a container in HTML. So it encloses the uh, entire entire component actually. One second. Okay. Actually, uh, there are few kids uh, playing around. One minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now it's gone. Yeah, one minute, one minute. Okay, okay. Uh, Nitin, one kind request. I'll make yeah. you the host now. Once okay. the uh, uh, webinar is uh, done, uh, you, okay. can you please provide the host access to me again? Yeah, and sure. Some technical I can, issues. I can do yeah. that. Yeah, thank you so much. I'll be yeah. texting you in the chat box. Yeah, okay, sure. Okay. Okay, uh, so now I got access. I'll share my screen again. Okay. Read it. Okay. So uh, as you can see, So as you can see, this is a simple uh, application, right? So this is a counter application. So uh, you can, whenever you click increment, the value will get incremented. And when you click on decrement, the value will be decreased. So uh, this is how I implemented. First, I created the layout using HTML. So div is simply a container, like a box, which will enclose all the elements. So uh, here I have mentioned the title as counter app, counter value, and then uh, this uh, span tag. So this span tag is actually uh, is used to uh, enclose text. So within this span tag, you can actually add whatever uh, whatever text you want. So current since the counter value is initially zero, I mentioned this as zero, and then uh, we have added two buttons using this button tags, HTML tags, and I have also added IDs for them so that I can uh, reference them in JavaScript. And uh, there is also some. Uh, uh, styles I've wrote and just some basic style. So uh, when it comes to uh, ja JavaScript part, so what I'm doing is that I'm referencing this uh, value, this uh, particular element and these two buttons here in value, uh, in button, uh, DEC button, so these three variables. So what I'm doing is uh, after that, uh, I am adding event listeners. Okay, so event listener, what they do is that uh, they take two parameters. One is uh, the event type, and then what we have to do when that particular event happens. So here I have mentioned add event listener as click. So which means uh, when I click means uh, this particular function will be called increment and decrement. So what I'm doing is on each click, what I'm doing is I'm uh, incrementing the counter value and then updating this uh, number, actually this text. One second. Yeah. So. So uh, I'm able to increment and decrement it. So uh, this is a simple uh, application that is made using a HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? But uh, 
but uh, this is how initially website websites used to be they used to have very minimal functionality so uh, you didn't have to write very complex code and all uh, as you can see for example this is a website of intercom so these are normal websites okay so everything you see here can be done using simple html css and javascript but the thing is as a time went by especially in the last decade uh, our the business requirements uh, became became more complex and uh, challenging so the thing is uh, we have we had to focus more on writing those complex logic and we had to uh, stop focusing on this common things like for example uh, creating these simple creating these simple uh, applications and all. so for that purpose we actually moved to uh, using frameworks and libraries so uh, for example we have your you might have heard about few frameworks and libraries like uh, react which we are going to talk about soon uh, view angular jquery and all so uh, first of all so first of all frameworks and libraries uh, are were developed for the same purpose so uh, they are they are both code written by someone else that helps you to perform some common tasks in a uh, easier way i mean instead of go going through very uh, specific way uh, they provide an abstraction uh, by which you can do the common tasks in a easier way so that is the purpose why frameworks and libraries were invented in the first place so uh, so now i'm going to talk about a difference between framework and a library so the difference between framework and library is actually inversion of control so what do i mean by inversion of control uh, for example uh, consider a framework like a, okay first i'll talk about library uh, first of all con uh, i'll consider a library called as react okay first of all we'll consider a, uh, a react framework this is actually a react app okay uh, we don't have to go through in detail but i'll just show you how why this react is called as a library so uh, the react is actually example of a good library so what a library does is that uh, so we are writing our code here right in various files what uh, we do is uh, uh, whenever we want something from the library we import it and we call it so this is what we have done here as you can see here uh, this, we have imported something called a strict mode this is actually a, a react component uh, from react so uh, we are uh, importing components when and there needed from uh, uh, whenever needed from uh, that react library so uh, the code we write actually has control over the library the library doesn't control us so that's a library so uh, what happens in the case of a framework for example this is actually a vue.js uh, file actually uh, so as you can see we are creating a new view template okay so here as you can see uh, there is there is a, a predefined set of parameters already like template element data methods and all so the thing is you don't have much control over what you can do here you just have to plug in your code when and there uh, needed so he, in the case of a framework the framework controls uh, your code it calls your code whenever needed so that is actually the main difference between a uh, framework and a library so uh, in today's topic since we are going to talk about react which is actually a library we will focus on the libraries so uh, now the next thing is uh, why should we uh, use react how is it better than uh, the other frameworks like angular view and all so uh, react there are actually three things actually uh, you know when it comes to which are famous when it comes to uh, front end frameworks one is uh, react angular view out of these three react is the most popular one which is a library uh, the reason is uh, the first reason is uh, react doesn't have impose a specific architecture unlike angular view so for example here you see when you you have a, sp a specific way of doing certain things and all and you have to follow certain architecture and all architecture rules and all but when it comes to react you don't have to follow anything like that uh since react is a library it doesn't enforce any strict conditions and all so the only thing react uh, cares about is uh, rendering uh, the ui for example i have rendered this blue box right so uh, the on react only cares about the rendering the ui so what so other advantage is uh, react is actually very flexible to work with apart from react you can also uh, add uh, other packages to your application and then use them along with react 
React supports a wide variety of community uh, developed packages as well. So you can uh, do those things as well. And another th uh, advantage of from learning React is that uh, use, uh, if you if you have mastered React, there is something called as React Native. So React uh, React Native is actually used to build uh, mobile applications for both iOS and Android. So uh, if you I mean uh, if you are going to develop for Android, you must know either Kotlin or Java. Or or if you are going to de develop an app for uh, iOS platform, then you must know Swift. But uh, uh, if you don't want to spend time on learning those two, then you can actually uh, learn React Native, which allows you to write the same code and uh, create, uh, publish mobile apps for both Android and iOS platform. So there's that advantage. So uh, now I'm going to, now I'm going to uh, write the same counter app actually. I am now I'm going to write the same counter app and show you how easy it is to uh, how easy it is to uh, write the same in react actually so so this is actually a react uh, app so i'm going to so in react app uh, everything is based on components okay so uh, when you are writing your normal html css uh, you are, you simply keep specifying tabs one second Okay, uh, so I'll continue. Fine. Okay. So, uh, like I was saying, uh, in when it comes to React, uh, you write everything in the form of components. Okay. So, as you can see, a component is characterized by this uh, format. Actually, open this uh, bracket uh, component name. Uh, slash and then this closing angle bracket so, so for example uh, in this normal uh, html application i showed you before you can see that there is no such thing as components you keep on mentioning tags as and then you go as and then as you go as you go uh, but in react you have this advantage of splitting everything into components so it uh, improves code readability i mean you will be uh, easily able to uh, look at someone's code and understand what they are actually trying to do but the same cannot be said for a traditional uh, web application so uh, i'll go to this app here as you can see we are importing the necessary things we are importing a css style sheet and then this is style components which i'll explain soon and here as you can see uh, this is an uh, react component actually so uh, the, this is how we actually uh, mention a react component function uh, function component name and you open the brackets so within this you have to return a component so uh, what you have to do is you can mention something like okay, first uh, so you open a div tag and then you have to also close it like in your traditional application and then So, uh, hi, uh, Nitin. This is Venkat from Gubi. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah. Just one minute. Can you make me host? Uh, there is some one options to be changed. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry for the interruption. People. Yeah, yeah, sure. No worries. Uh, can you tell me where the option is? Yeah, you can find it in the right side participants where you can. Uh, participants. Yeah, I'll, I have reclaimed okay. the host. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, sure. wait. Just one minute. Yeah, sure. Thank you. 
Hi, Shivanjali, are you there? Okay, uh, so I'll continue again. Yeah, okay, I'm starting, guys. Uh, okay, I just got my control. Nitin, before you go ahead, uh, can you please disable the annotations? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. You can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, annotation is disabled. Okay. So uh, I'll speak again. Uh, so where did I leave? Okay. So uh, this is how you uh, create an electron. I mean a React component at first. Uh, so what you do is uh, uh, function component name uh, open close brackets and then you open these function brackets and within that you can return whatever HTML you want. So this HTML is actually called as JSX JavaScript expression because you are actually writing this HTML code with the help of JavaScript. So they are called as uh, JSX. They are sim similar to this uh, normal HTML code only. So as you can see, uh, function we have created a component now, but the thing is uh, you have to export it. Only when you have exported it, uh, only when you have exported it, you can actually use it here. So yeah so uh you have to use export default function app and then return whatever html you want to render here so i am returning counter app here 
and I am rendering it here. So whenever you want to call a uh, call a component and render it at a particular point, what you have to do is you have to type app and then uh, close these brackets and then you can do this as well. App and you have to open the tag and then close the tag. Uh, so you normally do this if you are going to render something within this as well, like comp comp one something like that but uh, if you are sure that you are not going to uh, include anything within this you can simply uh, mention it as a single tag with this uh, forward slash so it uh, both of them behave the same way so here uh, i created a div counter app i have mentioned the text i mean counter app title so now what i'm going to do is and So uh, div and span. So next I'm going to create I'm I'm creating the buttons. You follow the same uh, HTML you uh, normally follow in uh, traditional websites. Okay. Uh, so uh, now we have actually uh, added, created the layout, but uh, the thing is, it's not, it doesn't look good as uh, here actually. Okay, I'm not as here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add some styling. So uh, in normal websites, we use this uh, CSS file, right? Here also you can use that, but instead of it, we have something better. We have something called as inline styles. So what you can do is you have to open the brackets and then mention the uh, same. You have to mention uh, the st uh, style uh, type and the style value actually. So I'm going to type display flex and then uh, flex direction. You have to mention all the styles in camel case actually. All in. Okay. I'm going to put a width of around something 400 pixel. 400 pixel. Okay. Uh, since it's a demo, I'm not going to focus more on styling, but this is how we actually add styles here. So now I'm going to uh, talk about uh, the functionality. So uh, in a normal application, what you do is you reference the uh, DOM element uh, in the JavaScript file and you add an event listener here, right? Uh, that that's another advantage of react and when it comes to react you don't actually need to uh, refer a dom actually uh, you can do most of them via this javascript code, normal javascript code itself also but you can also use dom but uh, you don't what i'm trying to say is you don't have to when it comes to react so uh, instead of uh, referencing it and adding an event listener all you have to do is uh, in button in the button tag you have something called as on click so this actually adds a listener so what i'm going to do is I'm going to type the name of the function increment. So I'm going to go to increment. So uh, as you can see, I've created a function here. So and I am uh, mention, referencing to non-click. Also mentioned decrement. The same way. So, uh, so next we are going to focus on how we are going to update the counter value here. So for that, uh, we have something called as use state. You actually import use state from react import use state react. 
So, so this is how the syntax goes. Uh, you actually open square brackets, which is an array. Uh, you mentioned the name of the uh, state value. So you're going to maintain a state here, state of the counter value. So I'm going to just maintain minutes counter and then set counter. I'll explain a syntax with a short, short moment. Okay. U state of zero. Okay. So what I have done here is that this U state returns two, two uh, arguments actually. One is the counter. So this counter uh, refers to the uh, current value of this counter value. Currently it's zero. And then it also returns another argument, which is the method, which is a function which actually updates the counter value. So counter and set counter equal to use state of here. You can mention the initial value in our case. It's zero because we want the counters initial value to be zero. So uh, we have to make sure that this state, the state value here is in sync with what you're actually displaying in the UI. So what you can do is uh, within HTML, if you're going to uh, write JavaScript, you have to open this, these brackets. And then here you, have, you can simply mention the count counter actually. So as you can see, it's mentioning zero. For example, if I'm going to give a initial value of 10, it gets immediately updated to 10. So you can see how easy it is uh, from a writing a traditional JavaScript application to writing a React application. So now I'm going to focus on this increment and decrement. So for increment, what we are going to do is we are going to update the value. So we are going to call set counter and then we are going to add counter plus one, which is, uh, I mean, the previous value plus one because we are incrementing for decrement. It's similar set counter of counter minus one. So now it's done. So if you see here, so this is actually the power of uh, react. So what happens here is uh, when you, when you click on the increment button, the control goes to this increment function. And here uh, we are calling this set counter, right? Which actually increments the value by one. So whenever you call this set, uh, the second argument set counter, uh, the entire HTML gets rendered again. You can't see it here clearly, but that's, that's what happens within a fraction of seconds. The entire uh, UI is uh, rendered again. So I'm incrementing and decrementing. So this is how, so uh, as you can see how easy it is to write the same in a react and also how easy it is to read, but the same cannot be said for your traditional uh, JavaScript applications. So now uh, next time I'm going to talk about uh, styled components. So uh, styled components was uh, mainly developed for uh, react. So it's uh, called as actually a CSS and JS styling framework. So the thing is, uh, uh, like how we are using HTML within a JavaScript file, uh, we are going to write CSS in JavaScript file. So uh, that's how, that's what style components are for. They are actually used for uh, easily creating components in React. For example, uh, like I told before, you can create your own CSS file and import it and uh, mention them like here, or, or you can also uh, use these styles. But the problem with these methods is that, uh, they become a very difficult to manage uh, in a very large application. So it's kind of difficult. And also all the uh, CSS will be loaded initially, which is uh, kind of like a problem when the initial. So uh, for all those reasons, uh, we are going to use style component. I've actually already installed style components here. So I'm going to create a style component now. One second. I'll show you how easy it is to create a style component. So first I'm going to create a style component for the button here. Uh, you have button. I haven't added style styles for this button. I'm going to create a styled button now. So all you have to do is create a styled. You can name uh, the component however you want. I'm going to name it a styled button equal to, you have to import this import style from style components styled dot the name of the html element our our html is a button so we are going to buy like button style dot button and you have to open this back ticks so within this you can write your normal uh, cs css actually 
Uh, here, as you can see, the way of uh, specifying CSS styles is kind of a little different, but here you can write your normal CSS. So here I'm going to type background color. Of, I'm going to give a color of blue actually. Blue width of 200, 200 is small, 300 pixel height. So uh, now what you have to do is uh, instead of using this button, we are going to replace it with the styled button. Styled button slash you can close it since there is not there is okay. Increment. The height is kind of very high. Something like 50. The low for so it be easy. okay so i'm gonna take away this button so for increment i replaced it with this button and you can also add an on click exactly like your previous method previous uh, html tag so they behave in the same way as a html tags on click for on click i'm going to take increment so as you can see it works the same way now i'm going to replace this decrement button with the same so this is the power of style component. You can write style once and uh, use it anywhere you want. It's up entirely up to you. Sky is the limit. So style component, style button of decree, and I'm going to add an on click listener here. And I'm going to remove this decrement. See. I'm incrementing and I'm decrementing it. This is how it is. So, uh, so if you, okay, one second. So this is how you, uh, this is advantage of style component. You can create a components easily with the uh, CSS logic. You can use this style button as a simple, uh, normal react component itself. It acts in exactly the same way. And another advantage of the style component is it also provides support for SAS so within this, you can also write a uh, SAS uh, styling logic and all, which will be very easy for you. And I'll, and also, uh, for example, if you note, if you worked in web development before, you know, you can, you know that uh, we actually make use of class names to denote uh, the state of the particular uh, UI component. For example, uh, um, when you are clicking a button, you might update the class to like a button click. And if you are releasing it in button not click or something based on that class name, you will um, apply styling. So uh, instead of using class names, style style components has a strict to no class names policy. Instead of using class names, what you can do is uh, you can pass props to them. For example, let's say uh, when I'm hovering over these buttons, I want different colors for increment and decrement. So I'm going to be like, I'm going to go ask something called as is increment to true and then for this i'm gonna mention it as false okay so now nothing happens everything looks the same so this is where the magic happens so what i'm gonna do is for uh, changing the color on hovering uh, we all know that there's something called as hover this hover uh, pseudo, pseudo class pseudo element i mean so uh, here, uh, the thing is, we are going to apply this particular whole state for uh, logic to the same component. So for that, what you have to do is you have to add ampersand. Ampersand refers to the same component. Ampersand, I mean, uh, when you are hovering over this particular component, you can write whatever uh, style styling you want. So I'm going to write a background color of. background color of green. So see what happens. When I'm hovering, I'm getting green color. So, but uh, the what I mentioned before was I want to uh, display different colors for different buttons. So what we can do is here type a dollar symbol and open these brackets. Within this, you can write JavaScript actually. So props of the props actually has access to all these uh, variables. You can add how many ever props you want here. So I'm going to mention props dot 
is incremental and if it's increment means uh, i'll add green color if not i will add uh, i don't know like pink something like that so see what happens green and pink so uh, this is just a tip of the iceberg you can uh, write very complex styling logic logic uh, used by passing these props you can pass how many ever props you want you can pass additional props as well here so that is the power of style components so uh, now uh, you guys learned about react right so uh, this using react uh, you learned how to create web applications but our focus is today on uh, desktop applications right so for desktop applications uh, in initially uh, before javascript became very popular uh, to write desktop applications like for example this calculator this simple calculator is a desktop application right so to write this uh, application you have to make use of c sharp if you are going to write a windows desktop application if you are going to write a mac uh, mac os application you have to use uh, swift or objective c something like that so the problem with this is that you have to know two different uh, technology pro languages and frameworks to uh, publish to different platforms so uh, to solve that problem what what they introduced they introduced something called as electron so this uh, electron is written using javascript so you basically what it does is that you can build cross platform desktop apps with uh, javascript html and css just like uh, you are uh, writing uh, creating a web app or a website so uh, uh so this vs code i don't know how many of you have used vs code this vs code was actually developed using elect electron and also your whatsapp desktop application slack slack is actually a very popular thing so the slack desktop version of slack was actually written using electron so that's what we are going to see now so uh this is actually a second this is actually a demo application this is actually a uh, demo electron application that was created uh, by us so uh, this is a, simply a chat app okay similar to whatsapp so uh, in whatsapp you can create groups and you can go to those groups and send messages right so that's what this uh, app does simple demo app so for that so i'll just explain uh, how electron works before so normally uh, in a normal web application you have uh, you write your html css javascript and then you render based on what the code right so uh, when it comes to uh, electron it's uh, the process kind of is a little different actually so uh, when it comes to electron uh, each electron application desktop application has two processes one is the main process and the another is the renderer process so the renderer process as the name suggests is actually used to uh, render the ui so for example let's say uh, one second so this uh, vs code right so in this vs code you are seeing this ui right so all the uh, rendering of the ui and all is actually handled by this uh, renderer process so uh, that's the purpose of the render process so it simply uh, updates maintains state updates the state and also uh, renders the ui based on uh, the state of the application so and then we have something called as the main process you don't this actually runs in the background of the desktop application so this actually has access to the entire desktop you can access your os files and everything actually so uh, this is uh, the code code repository for a simple electron application so as you can see within this one second okay so within this source folder uh, we are actually uh, rendering all the ui so uh, the source folder contains all the files that are related to the renderer process and then uh, we have something called as electron folder within this uh, we have something called main.j so this actually is the uh, main process this actually handles the creation of the window desktop i mean for this uh, unlike websites uh, desktop applications have their own separate window right so we make use of something called as browser window from electron to create the window you can mention the width height and also a couple of other properties and then what it does is that uh, it has something called as load url that function simply loads the html file 
or a, a particular website url of the website so main window dot load url of start url so uh, i'm going to run the desktop application now so for that first yarn run dev See, this is their electron application. It has its own separate window. See, so this logic is actually handled by this browser window. Since you have mentioned a width and height of 800 and 600, it's rendered in that side. So I'll talk about the functionality of the application soon. Uh, so uh, this is handled by this package.json. You can find the script for running this yarn run dev. So this will start this electron. So you have to have electron installed on your uh, node uh, npm project actually node project and then uh, you have to call this electron from this particular folder to actually uh, create this electron app. so within this as you can see uh, we are actually uh, rendering this particular index.html uh, yeah this index.html and from here within this uh, root only we are uh, uh, rendering all the react components so uh, this source folder contains all the react components so uh, now I'm going to talk about the, uh, how do I say this, functionality of the application. So uh, within this, everything is your normal React process only. So uh, what we are doing is for, uh, I don't know if you guys have worked on uh, WebSockets or Socket.io. So when we are going to uh, implement a chat functionality, like, in, like the ones found in WhatsApp, Instagram or anything, any other app. Uh, you make use of something called as web sockets. So they are simply like a channel for sending messages from one place to another. So since now uh, our desktop application is the client, right? We can send messages from the messages to the server and the server will also send messages to us in a fast, a lightning fast manner. So this is actually handled by a uh, web socket. For our, for our application, we have used something called as uh, socket.io. Let me show you that. You use this socket.io. You can go through this later. So it's simply uh, it's used to create a socket channels between the server and the client and used to send messages. It also has additional functionality, but for our use case, we don't have to go through that. So uh, if you go through this application, here also we have actually used style components. For example, if you can see this particular section, right? See, uh, you return a styled.div. Instead of using the div directly and referring your styles for the div from a separate uh, CSS file or inline styles, we have actually created a style component for this section. And we have also used it in so many places. So here's, here we have used it once, another, another reference. You are also passing this flex value here. Like I told before, you can pass how many ever props you want. And then you have this groups panel. Okay, groups pan. Yeah, so here we have another style component. So uh, we have rendered this UI like this. Okay. So uh, for, like I told before, uh, for socket, we, what we are doing is that we have this uh, server actually, within the server folder, we are actually running a mini server in the local. So I'm gonna run that server now. It's a yarn run server. As you can see, uh, the server is running on a port number 8080. These are called as HTTP ports. Uh, so it's running in local. I mean, uh, I can do what uh, I can connect, uh, interact with the server from my machine, but you guys can't do it. It's because it's running in my local. I'm, I haven't posted it in uh, any server. I mean, uh, posted it globally. So uh, if you go through this code, uh, you create a normal HTTP server and you pass it to this uh, IO, which uh, uses this socket IO. So from here, what we do is, uh, these are actually event listeners, okay? We have so many event listeners for like, for example, when a socket is disconnecting, we are logging it in the console. And then uh, for example, we have this add user, right? So for example, uh, add user. 
Yeah, okay. So this modal component refers to this particular modal component. So for example, uh, I'm joining this particular entertainment room as within. When I click on add user, what happens is uh, we send a socket message. Send socket message of add user. So what it does is that we have this function called emit that is exposed by the socket. Socket.emit, name of that particular channel. Here it's add user, right? Once again, it posts the unnecessary ones. Yeah, send socket message, socket.emit of that particular name, add user and payload. So what happens here is uh, uh, the control comes to this server. Uh, the control comes to this uh, server and here uh, the socket listens to this particular add user channel and what happens is uh, uh, it simply joins that particular person into this room actually. You actually pass a room ID as well because uh, we have multiple rooms, right? You can join whatever you want. So when, I, when you join this, join this particular socket to the room and then you broadcast as well. So I'll show this broadcast shortly. So the, uh, you can send a message from here as well. For example, hi. Once you send here, uh, we are rendering it. This is uh, all this rendering at all. It's your normal uh, React stuff, which you you, you guys know. I I am Neptune. See, uh, so uh, whenever you send a message, uh, you control comes to the send message, and then uh, what it does is that sockets dot in room id so uh, with, within this room uh, whoever whoever is in this room uh, will get this message because we are simply passing the arguments to the send message complete so that's what happens here so uh, till now i showed you uh, as a single user logging into it right so now i'm going to show you a two way communication in this application so uh, how i'm going to do that is uh, I've actually uh, opened the React part of the uh, Electron project in here, here as well, so that I can show you. You can actually do that as well because uh, if you are using Electron plus React, the React is anyway going to run on a separate local host 3000. So if you type uh, when you are running the Electron application and you are going to run the port in which that uh, React process, I mean render process is running, you can render the entire UI within the browser itself, but it won't be the same as the Electron application. So for the purpose of the demo, I opened the same uh, render process in this web browser as well. So for example, I'm gonna join here. As, see, as you can see, uh, this particular group has received a message from within, which I sent a few minutes back. From here, I'm gonna join us, uh, something like Chandler. Once I click on add user, you can see that a notification, Chandler joined in entertainment. So now I have joined a Chandler. If I send a message, hi Nitin, uh, it will get reflected here immediately. This uh, this concept is actually handled in the uh, React process itself. I mean in socket. I think here, yeah. Socket dot on send message here. So we simply update the UI based on whatever message you are receiving. For the notification, we have this. Socket dot uh, yeah. So uh, whenever, for example, uh, when I am changing a room, what I can do is we have this function called socket dot broadcast dot emit. So this message will be sent to uh, all the persons in that in that particular uh, room, uh, except the person who sent this message. For example, uh, if I'm gonna uh, emit this uh, particular message from my client. Uh, Everyone except me will get this particular socket message. For example, I show you. For example, I'm if I'm going to change to the sports, immediately Chandler changed room to sports. But the person who sent this uh, uh, message won't receive the reply. That's the uh, that's what we use socket dot broadcast dot emit. So uh, this is a simple application. So there might be cases uh, where you want the 
where you want the main process to interact with the renderer process. There will be cases such like that as well. So uh, in that case, uh, uh, you have to use something called as IPC. I can show you that as well. Yeah. If you go in electron and docs, process is an electron, process in here. Once again, IPC. Yeah. For example, if I'm going to send a message from the render process to the main process, I can make use of uh, uh, this IPC render. So it's similar to the way we saw on socket.io. So you can, what you can do is you can use IPC render.send the name of the channel and whatever arguments you want to send. And then uh, what you have to do is In IPC main, uh, IPC main dot on the channel name and event listener. You can actually listen to that particular message. So uh, from render process, you can use IPC render dot send and send a message to main process, and it will listen to that and do whatever is required as per the code. For example, uh, you can also uh, send a message from main process to render process. For that, uh, you have some, you have this as well. IPC. Uh, You have something called as window.webcontents.send that that is actually used to send a message from a main process to renderer process. So this IPC main and IPC renderer allow you to uh, implement the bi-directional communication uh, between the main process and renderer process. In our application, it's simply a chat application. So we, we didn't need to make use of that functionality, but there might be cases where uh, you need to actually uh, communicate with the main process and render process that I mean communication must happen between main process and render process in those cases uh, you can make use of this IPC main and IPC render you can go through the, these documents which are actually uh, pretty easy to understand so uh, that's all about uh, developing uh, desktop applications using uh, electron and react so thank